picture a world of talking cats, philosophical dinosaurs, child arsonists, and tea-drinking frogs. A world of tyrants and trolls, heroes and clowns. A place where emotions run high, and average, everyday people often lose their heads. Are we in Wonderland, you may ask? No, but close. We are in the world of internet memes. Before we discuss this world further, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Bonnie Tullock, and I'm currently a PhD candidate and UBC Public Scholar in the School of Information at the University of British Columbia. Today I'm going to give a brief presentation related to my research on internet memes, which I've titled Adventures in Meme Land, Making Sense of Internet Memes. At first glance, these digital texts, which often take the form of popular image macros, videos, hashtags, phrases, and gifs, might feel like a huge departure from Lewis Carroll's novel. And yet, Alice herself appears to justify their importance when she states, what is the use of a book without pictures or conversation? Carol's character, it seems, inherently understood what internet users would later discover. The most interesting stories are not comprised of one mode of communication or one voice. They are not bound by physical or virtual pages. Their only limits lie in the imaginations of those who explore their meanings. And memes can mean many things. A simple internet search is all one needs to uncover the variety of stories told through these digital texts. Angry stories, funny stories, real stories, fake stories, political stories, personal stories. Type the kind you want, and chances are you'll find it. And depending on where your search takes you, you may end up in a variety of places. You may wander into a Facebook wall. You might follow an Instagram channel, a trending tweet, or the TikTok that is making so much noise. You might read a Reddit, a 4chan chat, or fall into a Tumblr. You might even land in the comment section on YouTube. A meme may not be a white rabbit, but it can move and multiply just as fast. And once you find it, you have a decision to make. What will you do with it? Will you like, share, download, comment, send, post, ignore, or troll it? Will you upload an image and create your own in response? Or will you remix the one you found into something new? How, in other words, do you make sense of the meme? What meaning does it contain? How does it reflect or fail to reflect your view of the world? The answers to these questions will determine how the meme informs your life. These are decisions young people navigate every day when facing the steady stream of internet memes that are circulating online. In an effort to better understand the sense-making that underlies their engagement with these digital texts, I am conducting a participatory research study in a high school. The aim of this study is to collaborate with students and their teacher in an exploration of internet memes as a new and popular form of online storytelling. After all, as my participants and I are discovering, the stories people share through memes can tell us a lot about them. These digital texts serve as representations of ideas, humor, values, and beliefs. To the extent that people use them to represent themselves, they function as possible records of their behavior. They create an impression of who they are. As a form of self-documentation, these digital texts are social constructions of personal identity which means that the what, where, why, when, how, and who questions related to a person's meme engagement actually matter. Because, as nonsensical as memes might appear, they can have serious consequences. In their travels across the internet, these decontextualized artifacts often create miscommunication and offense. As documents, they stand as evidence of something. And, depending on how that evidence is evaluated by others, the parties associated with it will inevitably find themselves judged and sentenced. Which raises the following questions. How do we evaluate the information a meme provides in a world where people often say what they mean by saying the opposite? How do we distinguish between satire and parody online when we don't have all the contextual details? Who, in other words, determines the boundaries between hate speech, free speech, and dark humor, between privacy violations and ethical sharing, between copyrights and the rights of the public domain? Can a meme ever represent the whole truth and nothing but the truth about a person? Whose truth dominates? These are interesting questions to ask when thinking about the ambiguous world of online communication, where words like post-truth, fake news, woke, and cancel culture are used to describe the apparent madness of social media. Memes might seem fun and fake, 
but people can lose real jobs, real admission acceptances to colleges, real opportunities, and real rights. Because even though the popularity of an internet meme might be fleeting, it remains online. What we meme in the moment can impact our circumstances several years down the road. The pressures of live tweeting, live vlogging, live posting, and live chatting generates a sense of urgency that may hinder our ability to think through the possible ramifications of our actions. What do we sacrifice, in other words, in our efforts not to be late to the conversation? These are questions my student participants and I are exploring in the study. In collaboration with their teacher, I'm designing a class unit that enables them to reflect on their own meme engagement and to develop research projects that investigate the relationship between memes and digital citizenship. It is my hope that this research will prove helpful in multiple ways. Through it, I'm developing a classroom resource for educators, and I intend to develop a website that will make its insights widely available. Because chances are, we will all find ourselves navigating the curiosities of meme culture at one point or another. As we spend more of our time online, we encounter many different representations of the world. How we evaluate these representations will impact the way we see and experience it. My aim in conducting this research is to figure out how we can best support youth as they navigate this process. Only by doing so will I be able to consider how the ends of this mode of storytelling may actually justify the wonderful, wacky, and sometimes worrisome world of memes.